also help. That's m yeah. So that I can hear me. Do if I can hear me. Do I can hear me. I can hear me. Do okay, I can hear me. Off of Do you. <laughs> so, can you hear me? Awesome. Yeah, I got it. Not kind of weird that's third time around, but not too bad. <laughs> All right, let me see. Um, oh, I, love it. I still haven't gotten around to actually like finding a good um, like warming up orchestra sort of like noise and just like have that on loop for that first bit just to have something that's playing there <laughs> but when I do then I'll use the curtains more but until then see so you, you need to start like uh, doing Fiverr you just gotta Fiverr around try to find find something or I don't know I guess I guess there's a right now we're in a pandemic still but like once we're not, just go to the orchestra room at any like college. Let's record for a second. You're good. There's one that I wonder I if I could get away with, but there's um the Looney Tunes when there's like a couple things where um it's either when Bugs is coming up on stage and he fucks with the band or um there's another instance, but um they they have some orchestra stuff there, and I wonder if that's if that's a free use um, soundbite that they used for their cartoon. Because you know, back then, they did a lot of work with their with their animation and their storyboarding. But when it came to sound, you know, <laughs> they kind of got to cut corners in some places. Uh, Maybe. Actually, I wonder how much they paid for the um, the Barber of Seville for that mm. one cut because that was the entire song almost the entire song cut down to like what 15 minutes and then <laughs> all right in any case um we're still like six minutes early so we could just kind of talk and start nerding out a little bit but um yeah we got some we got some sound checks and all that's good Oh my god, so, um... I don't know, I'm just really comfortable right now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Today, I had to go down to um, uh, the my inheritance property and trim up some things. Um, I have a, a deal with one of the neighbors, and he's supposed to, like, mow the lawn uh, in exchange for, like, parking behind the house. Except he has not been mowing the fucking lawn. So trim down some things like in the front because he never trims down the front. I don't know. I don't I'm not good at being bossy. That's what it is. Um I also like doing things myself. But like I was like trimming stuff down and then a different neighbor saw me and he's a nice guy. But he came and brought me a fucking scythe. And it was like and it's a modern scythe. I can show you the picture because it doesn't look like what you're thinking. Oh. But it was <laughs> it was a scythe. And I was like, this is cool. And like I've like really, if I ever have a yard, I would get a scythe. Like I would don't, I wouldn't get a mower. Like, but it was cool using it. I'll, although I was like kind of disappointed that it was already like I did so much work with my like kukri that my arm. I was just tired, so I didn't look all that good doing it. It was like it was tough, <laughs> but it was like it was a cool ass tool. Like I, I didn't know, maybe I did, and I just ignored it. But like I didn't know that. The, like, do you think of like the the shape of a rake? Um, how it comes down and then it comes to that like D shape kind of this is like that except it's like slanted over and then like the the rake side is just it's open to both ends and it's like just a serrated blade and you just golf club really <laughs> but that's how that's fun I like I like doing things by hand really like and I would be so happy cleaning that and getting my file in there and making this a beautiful fucking thing every time like really, I know. If we were adventurers, one of my higher stats would be on blacksmithing. Like, 
<laughs> I'd be taking care of everyone's weapons. They'd all be clean and oiled. Oh, I thought you were gonna go. Um, I thought you were gonna go the Samwise direction. Just be like, "Fuck yeah, <laughs> general, general landscaping." <laughs> Elven rope. Fuck yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so excited about that. Uh, they they use the crap out of that rope though. They sure did. Like really, all it needed was just to be around like the most sneaky, fucking evil, devious thing. It was good. So the one thing that I will say is that I got really, like my 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 knuckle joints started to burn when. <laughs> Um, I saw how thin it was, and I was just like, "Ah!" Oh, because we had, we had a, we had a, gra we had a grappling hook slash rope, you know, and that that rope was maybe yeah. about like that thick, and that hurt to try to just like monkey grip and like tug on, and yeah. the the elven. We like tied in all those knots so we could use it. <laughs> yeah, and the elven rope, though, um, as depicted in the film, is like like almost half if not like more than than the size that i that i demonstrated earlier because i can't recreate uh -huh. that same diameter <laughs> but shit um... scary but like i don't know like if that rope was sentient enough to let go and to squeeze tighter on like uh uh smeagol then maybe it was sentient enough to like be squishy in a nice way so you could hold it and to like grip back it. Yeah, you. it just adheses. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like giving Gale sometimes too much credit. There's moments <laughs> that we've like that you can tell sometimes you're like, hmm, they didn't ask somebody that did this. <laughs> and if they had asked anybody, they'd look at that and go, oh no. That uh uh. Are they mountain climbers? Because if they're mountain climbers, then sure, that rope will work. <laughs> um, Maybe, except mountain climbers use loops and plenty of, and they they hold the mountain more than like that rope. That rope is shitty. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, um, I've got some I've got some property work ahead of me, and I'm trying to get ahead in work because. Um, my dad kind of took on some extra work like a while ago and that's what the whole like cleaning out apartments and other stuff was um, mm. like, two years ago and now you know he's the he's the landlord and goes over there like once or twice a week depending and cleans up stuff but um, recently he's been kind of foreshadowing that I'm gonna need to help out like maybe like one day or two days and it's my initial response is resistant because I'm already because like what I want to do is like here and this already takes a lot of it's time really you know so it's like I want to but I keep what I keep referencing it to in my head is like I want to build I want to build this raft you know and I want to go out on the ocean and he's coming mm. over and says hey why don't you help us build this wall and it's like you know it's like they're, they're, they're the same kind of activity right and it's like well I mean yeah they're both building a thing but one is trying to do this whole thing on the ocean and like move somewhere and a wall's just sort of stationary and stable you know so they're really kind of two different things and the more i work on the wall the less i get the boat done um but mm -hmm. i need i need like a i need an a, like a scheduler or like a planner because i'm fairly like if i if i just sit and i just think about it for a while there's a part of me that says nah you can schedule this out so that there's like there's time but um when i actually start to do the work and then i i look at the clock and just kind of compare how i'm doing stuff it it feels it feels much more time crunchy than um theory goes so i just need to work on it more i guess <laughs> but mm -hmm. 
um, that's one of the things that kind of, because um, me and him had a little conversation um, earlier about that whole situation, and um, that really stressed me out. <laughs> uh, so that was one of the that was one of the things that kind of slowed me down this week when I was doing my um, my portion of the demons. Is it uh, property that's over in uh, Santa Monica? No, it's um, Junipero. Oh, okay. So close. Yes. Well, actually, I don't know where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know. But I, I think that's always a tricky, or a thing that was like tricky in like dealing with the, the property I'm like taking care of. It's just that it, it's in, it's not too far, but it's, it's like east side long beach like i it takes me a fucking while to get there <laughs> i'm like i could do stuff but it's not the same as like oh i'm just gonna pop by there after work it's like no i have to go drive a half hour out of my way get there do stuff and drive back like mine's um ours is more feasible to get to like you you, you have the option to walk over there but um <laughs> i believe that walking is about if not an if not an hour, it's close to an hour. Like just casually walking, like you can speed walk and get there in like thirty minutes or something. Like I have confidence, but um, yeah, you know. But then you always kind of forget the concept of well, then you gotta walk back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So skateboards. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, except you know it's it's east or it's west side of redondo so then you have all these gross potholes and <laughs> cracks and concrete that's lifting up off of the thing and it's yeah. just like oh man you just got to pay attention you know um all right 203 so at that point um we can talk we can stop talking about um quote unquote irrelevant shit <laughs> <laughs> and welcome you to another another installment of SSTS, otherwise known as some sort of talk show. Uh, I am Tyler, and the purple one is even. And I keep forgetting that you're on this side. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, I just gotta remember that you're on my like my hair side. Yeah. Um, on some of my other assets, I do flip the camera every once in a while, so this, so the microphone is over here every, on occasion. So that's why I get messed up mentally. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here on the show, we try to do a metaphorical road trip of sorts through the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual, from A to Z. We um, we look at it, we research it, we analyze it, we criticize it, and talk crap about it. And then we get on to our medium of choice. Mine being Blender, and him wherever he can use some sort of ink. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we try to kind of draft up our own version, or just as close of a recreation as we can to that creature of or the week. <laughs> uh, so last week we did the Demi Lich, which was just kind of a skull that, I mean, I just kind of made into more of like a pirate treasure sort of thing with some artifact glowy things and even did this crazy sort of, I forget what uh, Alien ninja <laughs> space battle thing. It was kind of yeah. weird. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. With the psionic, with the cool psionic shield blast thing, which mm -hmm. alphabetically brings us to um, the demons. Now, I wanted to just kind of spend a little more time talking before we actually jump into stuff because this brings into the like this brings us into the first kind of complex category in the sense that. Demons is more or less of an umbrella term that has like 35 different <laughs> 35 different things and um I personally would at least like to get to the G's <laughs> at some point. Um so we're kind of speeding through and we're using this as kind of the template as to what we're going to do when we get to the devils and what we're going to do when we get to the dragons because those are 
almost the same type of situation, which it's one term, but there's like 30 to 40 different things in that term. Um, mm -hmm. So what we've decided is, or at least what I went with, was um, I'm doing the weakest version, um, the weakest version of a thing, and then um, the mid-tier or the like a, a higher tier version and then the demon lord itself so as far as demons go there are like the the pawns your special units and then there's like the king <laughs> the 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 big <laughs> you know the big unit that kind of determines what the rest of the realm is going to be governed by mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. some examples being um you have orcus who's a big sort of Merman, I really shouldn't have said this because I don't actually have his image to throw up here, but um, he is supposed to be the demon prince of death and the lord of the undead and all this other stuff. So he has a lot of depictions of like skulls and zombies and skeletons and gross rotting things. Um, whereas Yinogu is a lot more of an easy kind of example. If you know what a knoll is, he is the demon lord of savagery really but he lords over and governs gnolls mostly <laughs> um they are his they are his tools of war and sometimes his mouths and stomachs it's kind of weird i love it um so what we've done is we've gone ahead and just sort of selected a demon lord knowingly or unknowingly and then um what i've done is i've started at the bottom and i'm gonna go up might skip that middle point and go straight to the demon lord depending on how we feel next week but um yeah <clears throat> so um let us see there were a lot of good choices but we had to make It's funny when I came to like mine and I was thinking of mine, I was actually kind of <laughs> disappointed with the choices. I don't know. I was like looking at them and like, I don't like any of these. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but that was kind of, I was happy when I, when I ended up choosing. But I was like looking at them and I just, it was at such a roadblock of like, what do I do with this? I think I like, I like the concept of demons more, but I like the actual creatures in the devil category i think i think there is a lot more well you know it's weird because I, what i was going to say was i think there's a lot more artistic license that can go along with the devils but then by the time i got halfway through that statement it just tasted untrue in my mouth and i was just like eh, is it really worth saying out loud um because <laughs> the demons the demons have a lot of the like the crazier characters in there like i mean you've got um you've got jubilex for god's sake and that's the you know that's the ooze <laughs> that's the lord of oozes <laughs> so yeah. you know um and we've seen your goopy cleric before her was it a cleric in my mind it was a cleric <laughs> Cambian. something with goopy. a c there all c's um, but she was like a crazy one that was like it was a, a dwarf, a Merilith, and of Jubilex. <laughs> so many layers of delicious, delicious slop. So we're going to start with our first presentation, which I believe is you. If oh. It'll show up. So I was looking at... Um, I like... The, the campaign setting Eberron. That's the the one that um, me and like my players and also my DM sometimes when we like switch off, like we all just like run things in Eberron and they have demon lords and their relationship to them is kind of different. Um, I like, I don't know. There's not like a heaven and a hell in in their realm exactly or in that world exactly. But there is like, there used to be Angel things, uh, which was the Quothalts 
in Eberron, but they sacrifice their, their lives to like bind the demon lords that do exist. But then other little demons escape. Uh, and so I chose one of the demon lords there, um, which is uh, Raktul Kesh. And I designed apparently a level, not level one, but like a tier one of demons, like lower tier, not so interesting, like still above the pawns, but like, they're like, I guess they're like the knights, you know, like they're kind of cool, but at the same time, like very, very rarely is there a player that play, focuses their entire strategy off of knights. They're like, <laughs> it's like bishops and rooks and queens. But I did a Bulgara. Which looks like it's supposed to look like a orangutan kind of thing, except with big gorilla like arms. Um, but I, uh, Rak Tulkesh is the demon overlord, I guess, known as uh, the rage of war. Uh, and so, whenever there is like this concept of rage or like full slay, uh, like, um, bloodlust and stuff like that that's like the influence of rock tool cash or you're like feeding rock tool cash by falling into that and so i had this like idea um and like eberron mostly you take place after like this like huge hundred year war so i kind of was like thinking like this soldier guy that like i don't know just got too bloodlusty and like then started like hulking out with like the power of rock tool cash and that's why he's got like the big like orangutan like I don't know, swollen face pads to show his dominance. And like the demon lord Raktul Kesh, the way that they design it is it's like, I don't know, creepy. Like one of the defining features is that like where it should have like spines, it looks like all these rusty knives and daggers stabbed through it. And like its eyes and like claws are sometimes these rusty daggers. So instead of just focusing on the big burly like gorilla orangutan arms, I like shoved it full of uh, of these rusty daggers. I like how he's just like, I punch you, and now your weapon becomes mine. <laughs> More rage, right? Blood for the blood god. <laughs> oh no, wait, rage for the <laughs> rage god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I I had fun once I got into it, but it was just like. I wasn't. I didn't want to do just like a straight orangutan. I think that was probably what was kind of weird. And like the Bulgara, really, they used more of a gorilla design and just paint it orange and like reference orangutan. You're gonna like, fix that in most of their things. You're gonna fix that broken femur though, right? <laughs> his left, his left leg is kind of mm -hmm. jank. <laughs> Where's his torso? Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna make the other part look more interesting and just kind of like. Let you not focus on it. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm just going to make it. <laughs> yeah, it was awful weird. That bottom part. I don't know. It's weird. I like poses and stuff. And I know anatomy. But I'm not like super strict on drawing anatomy. I get really lazy when it comes to like getting exactly where the all the muscles and stuff. And like bones connect properly. And I don't tend to do muscly people. Like, I like, I do skinny things a lot of the time. But I like this, like, I gave it this, like, jagged, like, crown of, like, dagger horn things. Can I wonder, I, I wonder if you can do a rib cage crown. Like the rib cage doesn't really curve like that, but it does have like mm. like a cool sort of crown like um, feature to it. So I wonder if if you can. <laughs> It'll look like the two like bun things on like old like Vic not Victoria like middle aged or uh, the middle ages. What is it? The dark ages kind of like l ladies. Things. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I was thinking that Don't. you could like just like splay it out more. Yeah, you can get a little like bird thing, wear it. That'd be good. <laughs> Maybe you like you cut open a halfling <laughs> or a gnome. See, that's weird. Where like um, 
that now that there's some shading, you can actually see like depth and stuff. So that makes me really disappointed because in like my own ability, because it's just like um, shading is a nightmare. And mm. but the fact that it gives it depth, it actually allows that need to be like, oh, that's how it's oriented instead of like broken and facing in the other <laughs> facing in the other direction. Yeah. And like I will I will say like there's a, some questionableness about like I don't know the pelvic bone and where all those are connecting it does it does help getting those anchoring points with like shadows I don't know I had I had fun once I got going with it I think it'd be it's kind of it was weird thinking of like the different demons and demon lords and what I might I was kind of trying to keep it to Raktokesh because that's one of them that has more of a like a defined uh, visual style or it has been drawn by other artists. So I was like, okay, I can use those elements instead of just like wholesale, just making stuff up. <laughs> but like the weaker demons were, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see good places to shove pointy bits. <laughs> yeah. Um and I, I actually have a little um, anecdote for that when yours is done. Mm. That's what I struggled with. <laughs> uh... it was, I don't know. Like, I liked the idea that we had, that we came up with of, like, redesigning them a little bit. But then there was, like, some of it was, could be so subtle that I was just like, oh, do I just put, like, if I'm doing, like, Yinobu, like... Uh, do I just put a hyena head on it and call it a day? Like, <laughs> I was do super... I do an orangutan and just show it full of eyes? Maybe. I, I was know. super tempted to do that. Just like make a vrock or something, which is to those who don't know, it's basically like a vulture bird person. Um, mm -hmm. And just put a, just just replace its head with like a bird skull because that you know there's a ton of those on um, on Thingiverse and Turbo Squid and stuff. And just be like, yeah, it's it's from Orcus. <laughs> Call it a day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ooh, color. It's funny, like when I was like doing this, something that like draws me heavily to oh, this is when I got I got happy with it, is when I started adding like red. <laughs> <laughs> I like red, you guys. I like try to avoid it, but I really just like I like red. But that's a really uh, far really far into the progress to just be like, all right, now I'm happy with it. Oh no, I didn't click the button that says stay up when, when you're done, but now we know it's done. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, so uh. I do have, I do have the graphics though of what the, the original, I hate saying this thing. Um, bar, 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 baklava. My asset, my, my asset says monkey, even though it's ape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then where was the other guy? The other guy was in today's bam. And then this is what um, rock tool monster. Mm -hmm. Rock tool cash looks like. Which rock tool cash is like huge or colossal. It can be whatever it wants. It's a demon lord, but I think like. Bulgara, I think it's only like medium or large. It's not even all that big. I think it's, it's large. bigger. Yeah. So it's like kind of, it's beefy. Scary. I'd be scared of it if I saw it in real life. Like, but I don't know. But I do like it as like the like scary foot soldier. And like, I kind of was fixating on the fact of like, a, and it's a, attacks and stuff and its features it has like a standing jump and it can just like jump really fucking far at you even though uh they like give you like tiny legs i want to imagine that it does like the like a the olympic horse jump thing where they like push off with their hands oh uh, yeah just vault it um, yeah the one thing that I could have seen in yours, was, and I just had, like laughed a little bit because I was like, at first, I was like, oh man, like with all the blades and stuff in there, like it'd be crazy if it was like if he had like at least one like like 
thick ass chain or something so he had like a reach attack or something but i was like but that's so that's so overused as far as like having it on the wrist or something so i think mm. it'd be funny if they gave him a reach attack but it was on around his leg and i was just like yeah he's a skip it creature <laughs> he's, he's a he's a skip it monster so you get too close Which works because smash. it's give it on its arm and then just like whip its little legs out <laughs> yeah good i'd be down with that I, I'd, I don't know i think there's a lot of monster ideas that i'd laugh at <laughs> and probably get killed because of it. Although, seriously, the most surprising feature is that they can cast Disguise Self. The, the Baruga guy? Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I guess it's the idea of being a demon and that, like, demons could be walking around you at any time. <laughs> but, like, the, the mechanics on Disguise Self are kind of, like, silly if it is, like, large. Uh, that it technically still is large or it can make itself look like it's medium but it still takes up the space of large so it's just like invisibly bumping into things and having to be super careful it's just like i don't know if you ever have a friend that uh unnecessarily wants social distancing they might be a bulgara <laughs> all i want to do is hug you but you're always just you're always just three feet you're always just three feet away <laughs> right for some reason, and then it has like you can cast the entangle spell. Like what? Why? How? It, just nasty hairy orangutan like stuff sprouts out of the ground. It's just to make you. it all the. It's just to make it all the scarier. Like I could imagine the um the game developer like writing that in just being like yeah, because then there'll be this scenario in which they're like the group is running away from this gigantic like crazy creature in this hallway and then suddenly like vines rush up and they like if they don't stop the the characters entirely it slows them down and now as this nightmare you know shadow creature down the hall slowly coming at you scenario and everyone's panicking but mm -hmm. no one ever does that it's just <laughs> boga punch and then... right which would be hilarious in a sense of like it does entangle and then you're like fuck i'm stuck well, at least it has to go through it. But then it just does that monkey leap with, like, the crazy fucking leap, and you're like, no! And just gets squished by it. You know what? I kind of remember the group, like, um, like, in season one of Critical Role, like, they fought a bug, uh, and it did entangle. And they were like, what? Why? Like, I remember, I, I have a memory of them going, why? <laughs> why does that <laughs> thing have it? um yeah random spells like i wonder i guess i should have done more research onto the history of it but maybe they explained more back in like the earlier editions but i don't know it's it's a shit it's an awesome spell really it does make some some things turn really bad all of a sudden once people are entangled or slowed or separated in a way true um that's all right, so um, before I I rip mine up, so I had um, my the the challenge that I kind of ran into was I spent way too long trying to think about which demon lord um, I wanted to like eventually lead up to, because uh, when you look at what's written, there are like three common tier one. <laughs> um pawns so to speak mm -hmm. so there's the algora the shadow uh, demon the balga is the is in the tier two isn't it it's a little higher it's like one uh. stage higher isn't it anyways nope um when i when i was reading through it there were three so there's the there's the manes i'm gonna say it that way because whenever i see it written it's um it always has the S, like as if the S is not plural. It's just that's the name. Um, the Shadow Demon and the Vrock. Which doesn't really give you a lot of leeway as far as like trying to make them like you can easily make them into like some sort of goopy creature for Jubilex, but I didn't want to do Jubilex, so let's just get that off of the table. Um, 
and then when considering like um yunogu orcus baphomet like it gets a lot harder when you're dealing with a thing that's a bird and always is a bird <laughs> with a thing that is a shadow and doesn't it's a shadow <laughs> and then there's the manes which is like always kind of this gross kind of sack of flesh that is about the size of a cat <laughs> it's a, it's a small creature so um yeah so, so i was i was just sitting there and just thinking like oh god what am i gonna do like there's a shadow i, I can't really do a lot with the shadow and the rock there's like a couple things but it's limited so i was like all right so i guess i'm going with the manas so i went with the, the manas mains m-a-n-e-s you can always go to D&D Beyond and hit the little speaker button and have Felicia Day say it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to click on it right now. <laughs> because this is what I did. Uh, put it above yours. And shabam! And today's 15-minute blender <laughs> blender run-through is um, a little slower than it has been in the past because this was about 24 minutes. Um, I spent so long trying to f decide what I wanted to do that I ended up starting this at like 1 in the morning. And... Uh -huh. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just going to run through this, and that's going to be it. It's funny right now, the way that it's, like, starting is making me think that you're making, like, Gengar, or, like, really tough. Chansey. Yeah, Chansey. I like it. It's funny, so, nerdy stuff. Uh, the... Balgara, like there are several demon types, according to demonologists in D and D, uh, and like ranked one to six. And in rank one is the Balgara, the Shadow Demon, the Vrock. Rank two is the Chasme uh, Hezro, uh, and then blah 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 blah. But like the demon lords aren't even on rank six, so they're like rank seven. But then like the mains or manes. Uh, the closet and the 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 dench <laughs> dretch I think it's dretch those ones are like I think uncategorized they're just so weak that they don't even get a get to be on the list or they're just mold, put into number one but we just don't like to talk about them <laughs> when I talk about I thought about doing the 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 dretch we fought those when we used to play games like I remember that from our childhood. Forgot about those. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's it. So the the manas was kind of the the only difficult part about the manas is the um, concept that it's kind of this rotting flesh creature, <laughs> um, which is mostly a texture detail and i wasn't really in the mood to do texturing at that time of the <laughs> morning. so um it was just it was just all right so i just wanted to get the basic shape of what i assume a walking small walking flesh bag pawn would look like and then I'm going to get to the Demon Lord flavoring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which is partially why it, this only took about 24, 24 minutes to do. And then I crunched it down to 15 minutes. Because um, it's basically, you know, because the, 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 sh the basic shape of Amon is, is real, is, as you can see, is really simple. <laughs> um, but so then if I wanted so um, but then flavoring it was going to be the hard part. So like I said, you know, if I wanted to Jubilex, I could do the same thing that you did with um, the Cambian and just kind of make it like kind of goopy a little bit. And so I just go into sculpting and then just like 
drag some of its portions down and then like give it a transparency and then call it a day um i i didn't really know what to do with if i wanted to do yinogu like i would like maybe like um model its arms up and have it carry the the flail <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Uh, and then I was I was considering Orcus, so I have a I have a couple different skull assets in my libraries, um, so I could put a like a like a T Rex skull on it. But then I forgot that it's a small creature, so that wouldn't work out very well. Um, I could find like a rat skull or something and put that on the head, and then put like a um, human skull as like body armor, so that whenever it walks around, it like clacks at the belly. <laughs> Well, halflings are small. They're not that small. That's true. When I think of small, I like to go extreme. Super small. <laughs> extreme. Um, I guess that's true. So I could have given him skull shoulder pads or something and just be like, I am. Because it is in Orcus's bio that um, he... For some reason, he's the only one that has the ability to actually like transform the manas into a shadow or something else. Oh. Um, so, but it's weird because you'd imagine that other demons would have a similar ability. Because I, I could have I couldn't find it when I was when I was reading through for like the fourth time. But um, I could have sworn that I read somewhere that the purpose of a manas was to try and either be useful in some way so that they weren't considered food for a higher demon or just exist long enough so that they could eventually become a a next tier demon <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so evolve from amanes into a dretch or into a whatever comes next <laughs> um just get away from manes cuz they're apparently the lowest tier demon that exists in in the term of demon uh, to the point where as i alluded before higher demons usually look at these things as food <laughs> they are they they just eat them and if they do so they just sort of disappear <laughs> they they no longer exist um so i so in that journey of trying to figure it out i kept coming back to the concept that i that I tripped over with Yunogu in which it's like, well, I could just have him be like in servitude or something and just be like, yeah, they're, they're there. And as long as he carries the flail, like we don't eat him. But the minute that they are too lazy or they drop the flail, then they're free game. Um, I took that idea and I went in a direction that I didn't initially want to go because I knew what the final step would be. But mm. the idea gave me, the hardest giggles than any other demon option out there. And um, so here we're kind of, we're going to kind of get into the, the flavor a little bit. And let's see if you can guess, <laughs> guess where I'm going with it. Except I don't know how vain they are as far as their surroundings. Stop that. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting. The thing that I don't haven't gotten too far into, um, like, how does a soul even get to the demon plane? <laughs> like that one's strange. Like the devils, I get a little bit more of like this strange barter system of like, hey, we give you powers, you give me this. But like the demons, they don't even like seem to. I don't know. I don't remember very much on that like side of like they are trying to like accumulate souls. Like I guess they could do the same thing. Yeah. Up. It kind of like with a... the little, little top hat. It kind of reminds me of like the shadow servant things um, to the witch of the waste in uh, Owl's Moving <laughs> Castle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So is it, are they little like stupid sexy servants to uh Grazit? 
Yes. <laughs> um, but not yeah. sexy. Um, it's just fancy because right. in reading in reading what he does, um, it just sort of seems like he would have. Um, let me see. What, what? How did I come up with this? It was. Um, he generally. He generally. I don't. Then that's why I don't know how vain he is. But it sounded like he generally likes things around him to be to have the same sort of. Um, what's it called? Um, oh God, what's it called when they have a magical thing over them that makes them look different it's a glamour glamour yes um he generally likes things to have the same sort of like glamour around him that he does for himself um like it also doesn't sound like he really cares that much but um the one thing that i did read is that he often has like these little galas and these like little parties and stuff and he like you know invites all the he invites all the pretty and the powerful people to come and um i would imagine that he would have these little these little servants just kind of you know skidding around carrying like the dinner plates and stuff and what better thing than the than the mana is because shadows can't touch things and varrocks are varrocks screw them um, <laughs> but but in my head i was like but would he but would but would the the demon who's considered one of like the the most handsome the prettiest in all the realms like would he really have a creature that's a the lowest and b the grossest looking <laughs> like only like second to the lemur um which we'll get to in the demon or in the devils uh no i don't think he would so he would dress him up a little bit and so, you know, just because if it's within his realm, if it's especially within his, like, palace area, then definitely he's going to make it more appealing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something that I really enjoyed looking through the demons was that very subtly, if you look through, lots of them are wearing jewelry, a variety of different kinds of jewelry, like and it's a, like a little kind of taste to the idea of like, I don't know, like decadence and greed being sinful kind of things, but also like a reminder that these are intelligent beings, that they do like stuff. Like, and it was kind of sad, like in the bulk, uh, bar, 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 blah, 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 that thing, um, it like even says that this thing likes to keep trophies from all the things that it kills. Um, but mine being like trying to flavor it rectal uh to Kesh style i was like what it likes to keep is pointy bits that it shoves into its big nasty arms it just gets it pointier keeps. and pointier <laughs> it keeps what doesn't kill him <laughs> um yeah so i got to about this point and i was like i got to this point and i was like that's pretty fancy but um i returned to the idea that would does it really accept like it, like is that still pretty enough? And I said to myself, no. <laughs> there's there's still more that we can do to kind of cover up the gross. Um, and that's probably what this pause is right here is just me considering like what what more can I do to cover up the gross? And I like how it's like a little Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> And keep in mind, I would give it like a full, like tux, like as close to a tuxedo as I could get on a on a chubby body. But a, I hate cloth simulation on in Blender. Like as far as my skills go right now, um, I've seen people do it, but I've also seen people use a third party program or a third party plugin to better do like clothing that just sort of like you just create it on both sides of the thing that you're modeling it for and then it just stitches mm -hmm. it together which i don't have <laughs> and that program is like 123 bucks or something like that um so yeah um so if you subscribe tyler can get that sooner <laughs> i just need 30 more followers and then we can talk about that <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> so if you want to stop seeing naked things, <laughs> please subscribe. Help me clothe my creations. Follow on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube. Um, but yeah, so this was my this was my solution. If I were in the mindset of Grazit, how would I cover up this gross creature? And it would be to get rid of its gross, horrid, rot mouth. <laughs> I love that's how you're suggesting. Because yours is being like pretty pretty neutral as far as like rotty nasty flesh but like on the original picture i mean they hide genitals but they definitely have like saggy nasty boobs well like i said i would it give like it like i would give it like you know tuxedo top i might still leave its its bottoms exposed just because it's like why would i expect him to cover that up and b he might make those gross so um, yeah this is the abyss why not <laughs> <laughs> all dressed in ice from the top up downstairs well welcome to downstairs yeah and besides downstairs like if if it's free if it's free game then other manas can just clean that up <laughs> yeah, instead of just carrying around the gross um <laughs> but yeah so just imagine that there is like a like ulysses s grant type suit going on and that's the that's the grazit manas uh the reason why i i keep saying that i'm not all that excited of going into the grazit direction is because um grazit is basically just a dark elf which is just a humanoid who has sometimes has wings but um his most his most defining feature apparently is the fact that he has an extra finger so he has six on each hand instead of the five that like a standard human does uh and if you've come into the show as many times as i hope you do uh you know that i have a dislike for humans because i think that they're too standard and boring and what really defines them is what they put on top of it so it's like all right i mean then i might as well just do armor <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or clothes and I hate doing clothes and blenders, so I just don't like doing standard humanoid figures in general. Um, but yeah, I was actually really surprised at how, like, I really should have done more with the hands, but I was really satisfied with the gross globs. Like, that looks like it can carry a dinner plate, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'd be sad that it was touching it. And um, yeah, so that's the that's the route that I'm taking, which is the fancy man, the fancy which man. is which is totally like what I assume because like he doesn't like in, in no in, in none of the literature that I read, um, Grazit never really like says that he tries to cover up like the bad in people, and even some of them say that you know if an adventurer comes in and says, "Wow, that's you know that's the." That's the handsomest looking demon. Like I thought, all the all the demons are supposed to be this ugly thing. You know, they say that you you know you really you don't see his true nature underneath, and that's why I assume is happening throughout the entirety of. You the one in Pandemonium. I, I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> um, Maybe I don't, rem I don't remember, but um, that's why I assume that's in what's within his court. You know, like he'll have hags, but they all look like, you know, they all look like. 21 year old you know handmaidens and stuff and the manes like you like because they're the they're the lowest of the low tier he'll keep them he'll keep their ugly like bits there just to identify them as like you're gross but he'll still try to make them fancier <laughs> <laughs> which i like the idea of looking down on it and like oh and like at first you're just struck with the clothes you're like oh okay like where's it's oh uh okay <laughs> just a little bit more yeah hold that hold that platter up a little higher cool <laughs> um you know i didn't actually think about that but um that made me that made me really more proud of the types of clothing that i chose for i should have made the frills around the neck maybe a little larger just because um there are a lot of demons that are much higher than a small creature and so if it looks it physically looks down on the manas then you've got the top hat covering most of the head 
the frills covering most of the body, and then it's just this little dinner plate that's just walking by your knees. <laughs> You're just like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess the the hors d'oeuvres are being refilled. Nice. <laughs> Which I think, I don't know. I like that they added a couple more, like, really weak demons, because the manes is, like, an eighth challenge, and then a dench, dretch, a dretch is like a fourth challenge but then a closet is a one challenge but then it jumps up i think the next one is like i don't know two three and the bulgara is like four and it's like in tier one apparently and it's like man that would be scary to fight yeah i mean or the... new adventures like i guess i don't know yeah i mean the ball the, the ball especially <laughs> you can, like some yeah, I mean that'll that'll definitely jump up the challenge rating is um if they can summon more stuff. <laughs> Chaos <Okay>. magic. <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm curious to see how you go with this whole decadent sexy route, I guess. I don't know. Lusty route. <laughs> I'm curious. Extra fingers on everybody. Fingers for everybody. Look uh, under your chairs. Yeah. That's definitely within, like, Grazit's wheelhouse. Fingers. Fingers for everyone. God damn it. <laughs> no. <laughs> How come I can't... <sighs> yeah. Um... So you're going to have a bunch of blades and swords, and I'm going to have a bunch of fancy. <laughs> I'm going to have to research how to actually put clothes on stuff, because once I get to like higher tier stuff, then it'll be a little more difficult. Well, that's not entirely true, because, like, for example, the Marlith, and I'm probably not going to do the Marlith, just as an FYI, I might. But um, from what I've seen, they don't really wear like alternative clothing options per se they just kind of add more jewelry to themselves you know like i've seen them i haven't seen them with like um like a victorian top or something you know usually it's just like i i wear stuff so that everything's can you know is compacted and it's not you know flailing all over the place when i swing my swords around but i will add like three more bangles and um like 16 more necklaces and maybe give myself a crown or something <laughs> mm -hmm. i guess i don't know to wear i guess it is hard to wear clothing when half of you is a snake <laughs> <laughs> yes i don't know tattoos is that really where? I guess it doesn't matter. So I have seen it was walking around in tattoos, <laughs> and they just uh, like, and then they responded with "put your uh, for put your clothes on." I was like, "I am wearing clothes. I'm wearing tattoos. I'd be pretty pissed." But you know, D and D. So I'm sure you already have um, your next option kind of pinpointed, but um, I will throw out the question: What are your next three? potential options that you're going to throw at us next time well thinking in the realm of uh of the rage of war and rock Lukesh, um and if we're going to go up to like more of a general kind of status i mean i'm not overly opposed of going as high as like a balor or a goristro but okay. i think I think there's some interesting things that could happen. Like, I think a Merilith is pretty obvious, but how I can make that seem even scarier and more rusty could be interesting. But a Glabra Zoo could be kind of interesting, even though they're not that much higher than the um, Bargle, blah, 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 that I did. It's a terrible name. <laughs> the Glabra. But I, I'm not sure. I think I'm, I'm between those four. And I'm like trying to resist going into the other books because we've already kind of said that we're not going to. But I think I think I have some options. Oh, there's an R between the A and the L. Barrel. That's what makes it difficult. I hate that. 
B A R L G U R A. That R messes everything up. Like if it was just B A L, it's just Bulgara. But it's Bulgara. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no lies. Critical, uh, Critical Role fans out there, and if you haven't watched Critical Role, there's a point when uh, a person summons up a Bulgara, and he does it in such a good way, and like pronounces it pretty nicely. I don't know, voice actors. What can you say? But it was like a, hmm, that's how it should be said. Kind of like when we realized that you need to like make a like gargly bloopadoop sounds when you're like talking about the god of the Kuotoa. Which there is an actual like I actually did for three seconds look at the um the god of the deep the demon lord of the deep <laughs> and I was just like wow how do they not worship that thing instead of bilp dol polp <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm I don't know different yeah, people it's crazy it's probably a couple how about you which ones are you thinking of well. <clears throat> I think I have seen a fancy dretch, and I just don't, I just don't really want to do much of that. I forgot about the chasme. That thing's stupid. They have a nice, luscious mullet that you can stylize. Make it into a, <laughs> into a Beauty and the Beast scenario. Um, <laughs> oh, I forgot, what is a nilfanshi? I forgot what that is. Oh, ew, gross. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful um, hog lady. Let's see. Well, so the next guests that would probably be on the on the on the guest list would probably be like a Glabrezu, a Merolith. <sighs> You know, I don't really know how civil a Balor can be. Like, I feel like they have calm moments and they can kind of be there. But if anyone tries to, like, disagree with them, then it's like, all right, party's over. My ballroom is going to be singed and burned. Sadly, if you read up on the uh, Malish Fishby, I love demon names, you guys. But... (laughs) It actually they fit um uh Grazit's like I don't know ideals in a way. Kinda gross. At least the last time I remember. Fishney. I mean despite being Nalfishney. described as the most grotesque demons, <laughs> no the 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 Nalfeshni is one of the most grotesque demons. <laughs> it, corpulent mockery of ape and boar standing twice this height of a human but um yeah i mean hatred and despair i could i could totally see how they could just like go around and just be like ha you think that's pretty uh, even i laugh at you ha 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 and so that makes that individual either hate the the nelfanchi which fits into the ideal or despair like oh but i tried so hard <laughs> <laughs> um I, ultimate corruption i don't know but the thing is that i've already kind of stated how i might do a marilith in this in this situation the glabrezu i'm just gonna probably steal a bunch of um like costume concepts from um league of legends is cho'gath and <laughs> um I don't know if I have the skills to really do a Balor correctly <laughs> and then to put to try to make it fancy somehow. Um, I mean, if it's sexy, you could turn that whip into a couple different kinds of other whips. <laughs> it's not all about sex. It's just like... I, I, some people, <laughs> it is all about sex, okay? It's also, it's also envy. You know, he just. True. <sighs> but yeah. Um, so that has been Demons Part 1 <laughs> for this week. Um, tune in next week for Demons Part 2 when we do a more general or lieutenant.
type demon um, before we attempt the actual demon themselves. Oh, um, I forgot that this is the this is what a man is generally looks like. So vomit in my mouth. Um, so there's mine, and that's what they kind of. I got pretty close. Nasty. I just needed to. I just needed to texture the skin to have some gross contusions and blemishes and generic rot. But I think <laughs> that the hands don't need all the fingers. Yeah, that's because uh, uh, they're being given away as party favors. Oh, no. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what it is. That's like your focus if you're a warlock of uh, uh, of Grazit. You get a finger. That's your boon. The best finger. And all the fingers come from uh, from manservant Manus. <laughs> that sounds like an actual like dude. Manus! <laughs> come give me my scimitar. <laughs> Man is the man. <laughs> uh, well, actually, the men is are summonable by mortal beings as servants for some time. But yeah, whatever so, you need, thank you. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Follow us on our socials. Um, did you do the? Oh, you did a fancy IG. So oh, um, yeah. down in the bottom corner of Evan's artwork, you can follow him there on Instagram. And um, on Twitch.tv, I have the links to um, other stuff as YouTube and stuff. And yes, we hope to see you again for the next time. So long and stay healthy. Bye.